So we're going to talk conceptually about completing the square, and it's going to help us if we visualize this. So let's consider a, square, um, a rectangle. Maybe this rectangle has these sides. So maybe if you look at the whole thing, here's a rectangle. This side has length x, and this side has length x plus 6. It's made up of a square over here. And you can see that the area of this square is length times width, so we get x squared. And then if you look at this rectangle right here, we can also find that area. That area is also length times width, so 6x. So if we're looking for this, we can see that the area of the square is x squared. The area of the small rectangle, when I say small I'm talking about just this one, as opposed to the, the entire rectangle, of the small rectangle is 6x. So now let's consider the area of the entire rectangle. So I'm talking about this part right here. So if I want that area, I can do it two ways. I can say, well, that's x squared plus 6x, right? Add this and add this. Or I could say, well, I could also look at this as length times width. So this dimension times this dimension. So I could see that's x times x plus 6. And mathematically, aren't those equivalent? If I distribute this x here, don't I get this? I do. So that's interesting. So there's two different ways to write the area of that rectangle. Okay. So now we're going to look at what's happening to this rectangle right here. I'm going to do a few things to it. I'm going to uh, modify it a little bit. So I'm going to look at this guy and I'm going to do some shuffling. Okay. So we're actually going to take that rectangle, I colored in purple right here, this guy right here. You see it's exactly the same thing. Remember earlier, this dimension here was 6. Let's look back up again at it. It was 6, right? So all I'm doing is splitting that rectangle in half. Okay. So now I'm saying, well, okay, well, this is still... Um, the same area, right? So, area of the large rectangle is still going to be x plus 6 times x, which I could also write as x times x plus 6. Or I could take, like we did a few minutes ago, this is still x squared for this. This section is 3x. And this section is 3x. Okay. Which you can see, I still get x squared plus 6x if I add up those two pieces. So mathematically, I have changed nothing, right? Everything is exactly the same as before. Okay, so why did I split this? Why did I even bother cutting this rectangle right down the middle, bisecting it? Well, we're going to do some moving. We're going to move a piece. Let me show you. We're going to take this one here. I've highlighted just a part of it in gray. And we're going to take this rectangle this little bitty gray rectangle, and we're going to move it. So I want to point out a few things. First off, the length of this side right here is x. We know that because the length of the side across from it is x. So if we pick this guy up and we move it, let me kind of highlight, this edge right here will fit exactly right here if we move it. Do you all see that? Okay. So let's see what happens when we move it. Okay, so the area has not changed. I changed the location of this rectangle here, but my area 
was, well, I could wrote it in two ways, right? I had x squared plus 6x, which we said was x times x plus 6, didn't we? Okay, but now, if you look at the 6x, again, we wrote this a minute ago the same way. Mathematically, these are equivalent, right? The area of this piece, this rectangle right here is 3x. The area of this rectangle here is 3x. And this is x squared. So mathematically, I still get x squared plus 6x. I changed maybe where the where that last rectangle was positioned, but the area does not change. Okay. So there's something interesting, though, about this new picture. So let me erase a few of the things I've written here just so you can see. Geometrically, this whole thing looks pretty close to a square, right? The problem is there's a notch missing. Okay, so when we do this process, we're calling it completing the square. We are actually thinking about, okay, what do I need to fill in? I need to figure out what the area is. So if I add this little notch right here, this little square, I get one giant big square. So that's why it's called completing the square. You're figuring out what do I need to add to this geometric region so that I get a complete square. Okay, so let's look at this again. Um, the length of this side is x plus 3. Well, the length of this side is x plus 3, right? I'm just missing a little bitty piece to have an entire big square. Well, if this is length 3, this is length 3. If this is length 3 right here, this is length 3. So what is the area in here? It's 9. Okay. So let's go back to our area equation. We said area of the whole thing was x squared plus 6x, right? And we see that if I look at this piece of the square I'm trying to make, again, it's missing this little notch, it would be x plus 3 times x plus 3 if I had this piece, right? I'm a little bit short, okay? So I'm trying to figure out, like, I need to add something, I don't know what, right here. So that I'll get the x plus 3 squared. Well, what's the piece I need? The area I need is 9, right? Okay. So I can think about I have x squared plus 6x plus 9. I'm not going to write it as 9, though. It is definitely 9. But I'm going to write it as 3 squared. 3 times 3, that's where the 3 squared comes from. And this is equal to x plus 3 quantity squared. This part right here was the piece that we needed to do what? To complete the square. So what did we do? We looked at x squared plus 6x, and we see here it was short, some value to factor nicely into x plus 3 quantity squared. When you write it like this, we're going to do this a lot later, you're going to take the two things that are being squared, this and this, like x plus 3, and I square the whole thing. That's how I'm going to factor it. But mathematically, what did I do? Well, I had a rectangle that was x squared plus 6x. Remember the rectangle from earlier? Here was the square, and then I wrote it a little too big maybe, but um, so if this whole thing was 6, remember this was x squared, and um, this length was 6, we cut it in half, I'm sorry, the length was 6 at the top, we cut it in half. Okay, so you're going to see when you're doing this process of completing the square, if your lead coefficient of x squared is 1, you're going to take the coefficient of x and you're going to multiply by 1 half. The reason is because you're cutting that first rectangle 
and a half. Okay, and then remember, then we moved it down here, We're saying what piece do we need to make the difference? It's always going to be half of the coefficient of x squared.